a little bit of, of a nuisance as everybody wants to talk about uh, where they've been and, and the experiences that they've had. But there are some things um, about uh, uh, these pictures that I really uh, look forward to sharing with you. I, uh, I, if we run out of time, I'll, I'll just quit. I don't have that many in here, but I, I probably have too much to say about each one of them. But I've tried to capture the theme here, um, sun, sunrise over Jerusalem. <laughs> and you notice I've said sun, S-O-N, and not S-U-N, sunrise over Jerusalem. Evelyn and I, I've mentioned before, have had wonderful privilege of visiting there on a number of occasions. And two or three winters ago, we spent the winter in Jerusalem, which had been a great desire of my heart. I've been there with, with groups, and I have taken groups, and um, I have been honored to coordinate world conference in, in Israel one time, had representatives from 15 different countries, had guides translating in almost 20 different languages. And uh, it was something that I thought if I ever got through and lived, I would never uh, volunteer for that project again. But it has some of the most wonderful memories of our life. Evelyn hasn't always been with me on some of these tours, but most of the time she has. But to be there just with she and I uh, for uh, uh, those months uh, it was a, a joy that I, I wish everybody uh, could experience. I, uh, I'm, and be patient with me punching these buttons sometimes. I, I really need somebody to help me do it because I forget where I am. But we're looking right here at the Mount of Olives. And I just put in a little reference there that he went to the Mount of Olives as was his custom. He knelt down and prayed, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But as you look at the Mount of Olives, you can see, if my marker is working, uh, this, this is the called the church of all nations and in it there are a number of domes I think about 12 each of these domes have reference to the nations that have contributed to the building and the maintenance of this church of all nations that is built over the rock which is believed to be the rock or among the rocks where Jesus prayed and and uh, uh, that night with his disciples and he was arrested there by Caiaphas and the uh, temple guard taken away. The trees or olive trees are about here. You see this golden domed, uh, those of you who know something about history know that's Russian, uh, Russian architecture. This is called the Church of Mary Magdalene. It's really a part of the Mount of Olives and the extended part of the Garden of Gethsemane, a very beautiful structure. If you came out of this way, inside, between these two churches, and I, you, you, you often think, if they have, why did they build all the churches on these sites? Leave them like they naturally were. I agree with that, but at the same time, had these churches not been built on these special sites, uh, we would lose track of them, and they protect the areas and allow a place. If you went right up to the Mount of Olives, if you went over the Mount of Olives here, uh, just in a half a mile or so, you would come to the little town of Bethany, where Jesus spent the night in the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, Simon the leper. Uh, there's a, a nice hotel up here that's an Arab hotel uh, called the Hotel of the Seven Arches. But also on this mountain, there are other things that I will point out a little bit as we go. Uh, for it was there that Christ prayed over the city. It was there he made his triumphant entry. It was there he taught the disciples how to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. And also he took his disciples, to read that in the first chapter of Acts, 
to the crest of the Mount of Olives, and there he was received up into glory out of their sight with special promise. Well, look at that. This beautiful valley, when I visited there the first time 50 years ago, I visited there as just a, uh, just a boy preacher. Our children were very small. Uh, I took almost all uh, all the money that we had and then borrowed some to get to make that trip and Evelyn helped me do it. Um, was in uh, December of 1967, right after the June 67 war. And so none of this was there then. I mean, it, this, this has become a beautiful garden with a bridge. This is the Valley of Kedron, also referred to as the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Now this I mentioned to you, Lord teaches to pray. On that mountain where I showed you up there, you know, is, uh, is um, uh, a beautiful chapel that is the, the chapel or the church of uh, the Lord's Prayer. And in there, in mosaics like this, they have the Lord's Prayer in 140 different languages. Yeah. And uh, Evan and I spent most all day in there, of course, not trying to read them. Uh, a few in Spanish or in others we could read some, but uh, spend time there in prayer. A lot of people coming and going, but a special time. But you might notice this, those people our age, uh, we remember when we would pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father, which is the Lord's Prayer? Th this is, of course, a, a paved area. But this is actually the, the road leading from the top of the Mount of Olives down through to the Valley of Kedron and by the, uh, uh, the uh, Garden of Gethsemane that was the route that Jesus rode the donkey uh, on the day of his triumphal entry and the place where Jesus rode the young donkey into Jerusalem. I think I have seven seconds on each of these, so I'm just trying to get through. There is a Garden of Gethsemane. This is just a, uh, a gateway leading into the Garden of Gethsemane for those pilgrims who come to spend some time there in prayer. Here's Evelyn by. They try to preserve these old olive trees, and the guides tell us that the roots of these olive trees could very well date back to the time of Christ. I'm, I'm not sure, that seems hard to believe, 2,000 years, but the, the trees there are very old, and it makes a wonderful place uh, to pray in, in the Garden of Gethsemane among the olive trees. This is a mosaic. There are a lot of beautiful mosaics in some of these sacred churches. And you know mosaics are actually murals made out of little uh, one inch or half inch uh, uh, tiles that are different colors and they put them together to make these beautiful murals, uh, very beautiful. And I take a picture of this one that's in the Church of All Nations there at the Garden of Gethsemane and uh, it shows Christ uh, at the time of his arrest and it said that when they asked about him, he said, you know, I am he. Uh, and it said that there was a, a brief earthquake, the trees, there was a breeze, and even some were knocked down at, at that point. And so this, this mural seems to tell that story of the arrest of Christ here in this garden. Uh, and it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. That's just Evelyn praying, I was praying, and. Uh, there, the rock is there, just pictures that I've took with my telephone, so it's not great photography. But this is over the Mount of Olives, the Dome of the Rock, the site of the past and future Jewish temple. You see it just like that from the, uh, from the Garden of Gethsemane or from the Mount of Olives. I'll talk there a little bit more about the Dome of the Rock. Um, you can see the walls of the city. This is the Valley of Kedron again, also called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Uh, prophetically, uh, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, uh, of course, the, 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 there's a 
in wet weather, a, 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 a stream of water there, flows down, continues on down till it eventually comes toward the Dead Sea. It there joins with the valley, the Jordan Valley. The Jordan Valley going north towards Galilee connects with the Valley of Esdraelon, that is the Valley of Armageddon, because it's built there by the city of Megiddo, which was a famous city and a place for the stables of King Solomon. But the Esdraelon is a magnificent valley. We'll, we'll not take pictures there for, but anyway, it's called the Valley of Armageddon. And this Valley of Jehoshaphat is said in the, the Battle of Armageddon will run with the blood to the bits of the horse's bridles. And so, just to, to mention, but in this valley also, historically, you can see the walls of the city that are Turkish walls, the eastern gate that is sealed up, the top of the Dome of the Rock. But I just want to bring your mind back. Uh, those uh, 2,000 years before the birth of Christ, it was God who spoke to Abraham, who was then camped down by the, uh, by the, uh, the plains of Mamre, which was west and south of Hebron. Uh, and he spoke to him, he said, Take your son, uh, thy only son Isaac, whom you love, into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering. That's in Genesis, of course, 22. This is the Mount Moriah. This is the place where Abraham brought Isaac. It's also Mount Moriah upon where, they, of course, they built the temple, the sacrifices were made, and where Jesus was tried and crucified. On that same mountain, Mount Moriah. We'll see a little more of that in a moment. But that's where Abraham brought Isaac. The view of the city from the Jericho Road, if you went round on the Valley of Kedron and going on uh, east and passing by the city of Bethany, you would go on to the city of Jericho, the Jericho Road. Um, and this is on the south edge end of the Mount of Olives looking back toward the city. Uh, and the uh, Kedron Valley runs right down through this way. Here you can see the Dome of the Rock. This was the south entrance of the temple. This right here is the Tyropean Valley, which is the Valley of the Cheesemakers. Right there is what they called in those days the Dung Gate, or the Gate of Refuge. It's where they uh, took the residue from the city out into a valley over here that was called the Valley of Gehenna. Uh, or the Valley of Hinnon, which uh, uh, is where they burned refuge, and uh, I, I won't really go to that, but I'll just tell you there was a time in the destruction of Jerusalem, AD 70, that is said that, the, that they built a mound of uh, 100,000 Jewish heads in that valley and, and burned them. Uh, that's some of the records of Flavius Josephus. But they called that hell, or Hinnon, the Valley of Gehenna, was down that way. Right in here is the old city of David, uh, which was the Jebusite city, where the David came, and at the spring of Gihon, that's down here, uh, was later became the, uh, the, the tunnel of Hezekiah, uh, when the city, the old city was there. These walls here were built by the Ottoman Turks uh, and uh, some before the time of the Crusade. Uh, this on the, is, is the, the upper room area, a church there built in the upper room. Also, the tomb of David is up there uh, and that's called Mount Zion up there. I love this city, even I've walked every inch of it, I think. The Eastern Gate. The Eastern Gate, you can see, is sealed up. I'll talk about that a little bit again. Sealed up primarily by the Muslims. They sealed this Eastern Gate because it was sacred to Christians and Jews. And Muslims do their best to destroy, build uh, Islam things on the sites of Christian things or Jewish things. 
to just covet. That's why it's there. But it's sealed up. In, in the days of Christ, it was called the Golden Gate. But there it is um, sealed up. The Eastern Gate. The Dome of the Rock, the Eastern Gate would be right back down here. Uh, these walls. This is where the Jewish Temple sat. This Dome of the Rock was built by Muslims. Uh, one is also referred to as the, as, as the Dome of Omar. Um, it's built over the rock. The rock is the rock on which they believe that Abraham prepared to offer Isaac. It's also uh, the rock upon which, and there's a hole in it. I've been in there. You can't go in there anymore. Fifty years ago, I was able to go in, and I have pictures of them somewhere. But there's a huge flat rock. Almost the whole city is rock. It's just solid. What you, you If you do anything, you've got to dig in a rock. But this a great hole in it, and it was a place where they killed the animals, and they washed the blood and residue, ashes, out and went down into the Kedron Valley and on down into Gehenna. And so they called it the Dome of the Rock. The Muslims claim that Mohammed made a trip from Mecca to Moriah in one night on his horse, and he touched down there and went to heaven, and then he came back. That's what they say. Uh, and so they have uh, uh, caused this site to be sacred to Muslims, and they built this magnificent thing on their 691. It's a beautiful construction inside, magnificent uh, mosaic work. Uh, if you were able to go into it, they have these beautiful Persian carpets, and you go into it, nobody can go in with their shoes. You have to leave your shoes outside. And the thing I remember most is it smelled like feet in there. I mean, it, it smelled like feet because there's so many people coming and going. Uh, but uh, uh, it would be terrible to have that destroyed. There have been times when I thought the Iranians shooting uh, those good rockets that they can't control very well out of Iran toward Israel, that uh, they might uh, hit it themselves. Uh, to be honest, I was hoping they would, but, uh, but they didn't. It's really a beautiful antiquity. It, it's, it would, it, you'd hate to lose it, though I think there's a way to move it, but that's what is there now, the dome of the rock under the control of the Muslims. This would come up from the dome is over in this area here. If you, I don't know if you can read the sign there. It, uh, I want to back that up just a little bit. Uh, there's a sign there that uh, says the Lion Gate. That is an eastern gate north of that closed up eastern gate called the Lion Gate. It's also referred to as the Gate of St. Stephen because it was outside of a gate at this area where they brought Stephen after his marvelous speech in Acts 5 when Saul of Tarsus held their coats and they stoned Stephen to death. Uh, and it was there that Stephen, uh, while he was being stoned to death, lifted up his voice and said, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. At, at, that, at that place there, it's, it's really a nice place to visit. But if we go into that gate, you're coming right into the Via Della Rosa, or the Way of Sorrows. And I'll address that just a little bit. I want to move that out of the way here a little. Now this is a picture that I, if I recall, I got it from the the museum at Christ Church, which is the Anglican Church in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, and Christ Church is the oldest Protestant church in the Middle East. Uh, I, I know the rector there, the pastor, and I worship there a lot. But anyway, it, they have a nice museum. And they had this which shows the city as it probably laid out, where you can see the temple at the top there on Moriah, and different walls. This is the lower city called the City of David, uh, with the, the walkway coming down to the Pool of Salem, or to the Gihon Springs, uh, the Kedron Valley. This, and this is how the city looks primarily today. But I just thought I would show you that, how it looked 2,000 years ago, as best they can tell, the city of Jerusalem. Um, 
this is really an important little thing right here. It, again, is a picture of a mo model in one of the museums. I'm not sure. Maybe the Rockefeller Museum. I'm not sure where I got that. I should have written that down. But you can see this black line. This shows where the gates of the city are now. Now those are gates that were built dating back to Crusader time, uh, to Suleiman the Magnificent, and the Ottoman Turks are uh, uh, maybe um, uh, other times in that Byzantine period. But here you have how the walls were in the days of Jesus. Now that is important, extremely important, if you really have an interest in determining where Christ was crucified, where he was buried. You, you know, that's a great question. There is the, and I'll show you, the, uh, uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and then another place that we call Gordon's Calvary. <coughs> I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that. But you can see these walls, which date back to Herod the Great, who was a great architect, and he built most of these things beginning around uh, 30 years before Christ, or we say 30 of the, before the Christian era. And by Herod the Great, he was a great architect. He was not a Jew. He was a Nidubian. He was a good friend of Caesar and Rome. That's how he got the job. But anyhow, he built, he rebuilt the city. Uh, you may remember the disciples telling Jesus when they were showing him the beauty of the temple, and, and he, uh, he, they said it was 40 and 6 years in the building. They were finishing up in the time of Christ the, the, the temple. And Jesus said not one stone will be left standing on another. You remember that? But here, the eastern gate here, which has been the golden gate, the temple would have set here. Uh, this little area right here is called the fortress of Antonio, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. But this was the outside of the city. Go out here in the time of Christ is the right here the pool of Bethesda, uh, uh, Herod's Herod's temple, uh, Herod's uh, palace down here, uh, the house of Caiaphas, the palace of the high priest. There, uh, this area uh, was where Herod's palace uh, was. Uh, in the old city, but he had built a new one up here. This cross right here is really saying that that's likely the place where Christ was crucified. You can see then it was outside the gates, and the scripture said he suffered without the gates. So he was crucified outside of the city. But now the walls are, are here now, so it would have been inside. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre is right there, but Gordon's Calvary is outside of here. And I'll, I'll show you something about that. It's this wonderful study to learn out really where it is. In this tower, this fortress of Antonio is where the legion of the Romans had their barracks, was also the praetorium was there. And in, in that fortress is where Christ was tried before Pilate. I have another, some interesting views of that here in a minute. This right here is the a church built on the site of the palace of the high priest Caiaphas. And um, let me back that up just a little bit. Um, I do need to hurry, but I, I thought I punched the stop, but I didn't. Anyway, it's, it's a beautiful facility. Uh, it's believed in the garden. Beside that is where Peter denied Christ uh, twice. Down under this magnificent structure here, uh, there is a prison, and I've been down in that prison where we believe is the place, the cell where Christ was kept during the trial before the Sanhedrin court, before they took him to Herod and then eventually to Pilate, the palace of Caiaphas. This is from a museum again, just how the second temple uh, uh, was built on Mount Moriah and how it looked probably in the time of Jesus. It was started in about 520 uh, and was uh, uh, part of uh, uh, the second temple uh, when they came back from captivity but then it was rebuilt in 20 before the Christian era by Herod the Great. Uh, completely remodeled. 
just a quick stop there. That is a, a, a model of what the Tower of Antony looked like. Now let me depart a little bit and remind you, uh, Antony, do you remember Antony? Uh, you remember Antony and Cleopatra? Uh, the, the, the Antony was a great friend of Herod the Great, and of course, Antony was a general under uh, 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 Caesar Augustus. Uh, they met down at Caesarea often. She would bring her barge around from Egypt. They'd meet at Caesarea and often come to the city of Jerusalem. And, and because he was well thought of there, uh, they built this Roman barracks beside the temple area because if any trouble started with the Jews that was in the temple area, the, the Tower of Antony. There it is again, and just let me show you, uh, here's something nice, I think. Uh, if you punch the right button, it'll work. Uh, on these steps right here, in this area here, it's called the Praetorium. It speaks of that in the Bible. Uh, and I think it was on these steps where Pilate stood when he talked to them about Barabbas, and I find no fault with him, uh, what we have to do with Jesus. Uh, and it was here where the people gathered and, and commanded that Christ would be crucified. And this is stepping in, as it looks now, into the way of sorrows at the Via Della Rosa. It's just from, if the Tower of Antony were there, it's not there now, uh, but um, if you stepped out into these streets, you would be near the Pool of Bethesda, near the Praetorium, and in what now is called the Way of Sorrows. And, and some refer to that, of course, as uh, uh, at, to the 14 stations of the cross. Uh, with different denominational backgrounds, they have different stations. Uh, I, I love them all. I love to walk the area. I'll tell you, I have cried every step of the way just to think that he did it all for you and I. This is just in the old, when you, know, you get in the old city, all looks alike, just a wretched sight for the most part, but um, that's just a little bit of what it looks like. Then Pilate said, had Jesus flogged. And, and there's a chapel there, I'll show you a picture inside, a chapel there that's called the Church of the Flagellation. Uh, that means Jesus was flogged there. I'm running out of time. I thought I would. Anyway, this is another chapel. You see the crown of thorns there? That's where they wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. There's a beautiful chapel there with that. Uh, and uh, also a beautiful mosaic saying this is where they put the cross on Jesus. Uh, and he carried it then through the city. Um, this, I thought some of you might like to see that. That is the... Church of the Redeemer, a Lutheran church. I did a little bit of history on it, Linda. It was built by the church out of Germany. Uh, and, uh, but it's, it's really beautiful. Uh, I'm out of time, but you can go down in there and they have tunnels uh, that are under the ground in stone, uh, leading over actually underneath the church of the Holy Sepulcher. Uh, and, and you can imagine the Lutherans would want to get there before the Roman Catholics, you know, it's, it's that <laughs> of the years. But uh, that's a, it's a beautiful church, magnificent church. Everybody spent time in prayer in that beautiful church of the Redeemer. And then just right next to it, and it's, uh, it's been built onto, remodeled, uh, been uh, uh, destroyed somewhat by earthquakes, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre dating back to 1848. <coughs> The Church of the Holy Sepulchre, there are some of the beautiful altars inside the church. It's a huge thing. It's actually managed by four denominations uh, from the Eastern and the Western Church. You have the Roman Catholics, of course. You have the Greek Orthodox. You have the Russian Orthodox. And you have the Armenians. And if you're in there on certain days, holy days, uh, these people often get into fuss with each other as to who is really in charge. Uh, I've seen it. Uh, they embarrass me, but in their culture, I guess it happens. They use a lot of incense. Sometimes it's 
almost hard to breathe. A lot of incense going on. Uh, uh, more than a million pilgrims come and visit this church every year. This is another altar, some of them are quite ancient. Um, uh, and if you come right into the Church of Holy Sepulchre, you see this huge mosaic. You see a person's head. It's almost life size. But these are mosaics, little tiles built everywhere. And these beautiful oil lamps are usually Greek Orthodox. They always have oil lamps uh, burning. And then you can see in this mosaic the taking down of Christ from the cross. No doubt there's Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea, some of the women. They lay him on a bed and prepare his body with spices and they carry him, put him in a tomb. It's a, it's a really beautiful thing in the church of the Holy Supper. If you come out of the city, this is the Damascus Gate. And remember I mentioned a while ago that the walls of the city were different. Uh, historically, archaeologically, uh, the burial, death and burial place of Christ in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, even though it's built with all these antiquities, doesn't feel like an outdoor place. It was outside of the gates. More than likely, that is the original place. I don't mind to tell you, I don't like it to be the original place because it's so stuffy and all this construction and, and the way it goes, but archaeologically, it probably is. I don't, I'm not telling you, I never really know because it's quite a debate, but the position of the walls, I told you before, but then outside the Damascus Gate would be on our way to Gordon's Calvary. There's another view of the Damascus Gate and the city. The church here of the Holy Sepulcher, that Lutheran church, the David Citadel down here, and the Anglican church is down that way. Uh, you can see the Dome of the Rock in the distance right there, if you can see it. But um, this is from North the City. Gordon's Calvary was spotted in the late 1800s by General Gordon uh, during the influence of, 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 of the British Mandate. But he was looking over the walls one day and he noticed a construct uh, uh, where they had were building, actually building a bus station down at the bottom of this. And he got to looking at that, and it looked to him uh, like a skull. If you use your imagination a little bit, that looked like a skull, you think, maybe, with the eyes here, there, and the nose. And he decided that was on the hill outside the gates where Christ was crucified in a place that they called the skull. And the skull is around here. You can walk around in the garden there and see it. This mountain's below. And in that mountain was a tomb. A tomb in that garden. The first day of the week, they came to the tomb bringing spices. And he said, why do you seek the living among the dead? It, it's such a beautiful place. Arch archaeologically and scientifically, it, it seems that the other is genuine. But we can say that somewhere around here, within, you know, 50 yards, Christ was buried. He's not here, he's risen. I spent a lot of time there receiving communion and praying and I got this shot of her crying and then, then there's a shot there Jesus Christ that's there's several, several nice signs like that the Son of God by the resurrection from the dead I, this is quite a wonderful story I, I this is Irene Luzinski Irene Luzinski. Uh, I, I knew her husband, Danny, before, long before they married. And to me, it's kind of a remarkable thing that a German missionary's daughter met and married a full-blood Jew whose grandparents escaped from Nazi Germany and Poland uh, from the Holocaust. And they met as teenagers, in their early 20s, really, 
uh, in Jerusalem, and they marry. And you can see behind this, this is a solid gold candlestick, menorah. Uh, I'll show it to you a little bit again. A solid gold candlestick. It was um, built by a wealthy New York Jew who said, I will donate the money and build that golden candlestick the, that will be used in the, in, in the Jewish temple when it's built for worship. But I don't want you to put it in a museum. I'll only do it if you'll put it in the open where people can see it. It's not far from the Wailing Wall. It's in a glass enclosure uh, that's very highly secured. Uh, but it, it, it's solid gold. Uh, no telling what it costs. I don't know. We don't gold $1,200 an ounce, and there's a lot in there. That's Danny Rosinski, born in Argentina. His first language is Spanish. He speaks five, six languages. I met him when he was a teenage boy in Jerusalem many, many years ago. He and I became great friends to continue to communicate. He now has five children, has two children in the Israeli army now, a son and a daughter. Um, he is a school teacher by trade, a math teacher. Uh, he's now a certified guide and he takes pilgrims and, and as a guide in the Holy Land. Uh, mostly in Spanish, but also in Hebrew and English. He speaks uh, French and German as well. Uh, I love Danny. He's, he and I communicate every week, nearly. I just I really love him. Uh, there he is. I'll just let this run a little bit now. But that's the Wailing Wall, the Western Wall. Uh, you can see from the Wailing Wall here, the temple area here in the background. Um, yeah, you, this, this here is a walkway that's prepared to let uh, gen, Gentiles and Jews and Christians go into the temple area. Uh, there's terrific security. They, they search your bags and everything and just let a few people in at a time uh, because it's Muslim controlled. I was actually had my arm around Evan trying to take a selfie picture and a Muslim guard stopped us and said, don't be touching women in this sacred place. I said, I've been touching her for 60 years, man. <laughs> but he didn't, he didn't appreciate me at all. There again is the Dome of the Rock. Jewish temple will be built there one day. Christ will come to that temple. Um, let it go along. I've got to get through. I'm seven minutes past now. <laughs> Ezekiel said, the gate shall be shut, and there it is, the gate is shut. These are some of my dear old friends, two of them already in heaven now, I took that picture some years ago. Um, but this is the gate, but the prophecy in Psalm says, lift up your heads, O ye gates, be lifted up ye everlasting doors. And the King of Glory shall come in. Uh, who is the King of Glory? The Lord high and lifted up. Those gates will be changed and opened. We sing about the Eastern Gates. There again is back looking at the Mount of Olives again. Little things that we see here. Jesus prayed from the Mount of Olives. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have gathered thee together as a hen doth her chicks, but ye would not. That's so. And when they had spoken these things, he took his disciples up here on the mount. He was received out of their sight. Acts chapter 1, verse 9. Then two men stood by them in white apparel. Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus shall so come in like manner. If you see, there's a little chapel there. It's called the Chapel of the Ascension. And some of the locals there say there's even a spot here where his foot last touched. Now, I, I don't accept that. I do know that he left that mountain. And uh, uh, here... I just say, looking back over, let me finish right there, I'll close. Looking back over the mountain, 
I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, adorned as a bride for her husband. Now, I believe the New Jerusalem will come down and settle, not only me, I'm great scholars, it will settle over the Middle East, the New Jerusalem, and it will be the home of the saints for a, and will reign there with Christ. And the Bible says that New Jerusalem will be 1,500 miles square, 1,500 miles. I believe in my study that the Garden of Eden uh, reached this place. That the Garden of Eden was probably 1,500 miles in all directions. The New Jerusalem will be. And Christ will reign there with the rod of iron. And I, I believe that with all my heart. I thank you for letting me take time. I'm going, I'm going to close right here. And I'm going to ask Evelyn to come to the piano. And I'm going to ask you to join us in a little course, uh, maybe to end the service today, we'll pray together. Uh, let me say again how much I love you. I've told you before, I, I started preaching when I was 19. I've been trying to for 60 years. It took me half of that time to finish my education. Uh, Evan and I don't have any plans for next year. We're, uh, We'll be praying sincerely if God wants us to return and all. And if you can put up with us another time, we'll, we'll come if that's what God wants. But I'm going to leave it open. I told Rhoda, we'll tell him. They'll know something by the end of August. Uh, maybe the Lord will come. But I will tell you this, deep in my heart. I've preached in, uh, in Israel, in Africa, Latin America, Hawaii, Alaska, uh, I've never enjoyed ever preaching anywhere uh, anymore or as much as I do to you folks. And part of it is because I think we're a little bit like heaven in that we just come from all kinds of backgrounds. And, and that's good. It's been so good for me to get to preach to Lutherans and Methodists and Baptists. I have done that over the years, but primarily we're inside our fellowship. But don't we agree, when we get to heaven, they'll be coming from the east and the west, the north and the south, every kindred tongue and tribe. And we'll, it says when we see him, we shall be like him. Uh, and I don't think he's an assembly of God or a Methodist or an Anglican, uh, and we'll be like him. Thank God for all the fellowship, the great teachers, the things that have happened in the world. But one of these days we'll meet again. Sing this with me if you know it. And maybe you'd stand with me for the same. It's all right. We'll pray then. Thank you. Let